So one of the things that I wanted to do on Round in Romania was show you things that are rather cool that are in Romania because uh, the mainstream media narrative about Romania is quite incorrect, unfortunately, in my opinion. And uh, this is a fairly good example of an interesting small company that we found with some interesting ideas and products. So right now we're in a 2005 Land Rover. I think it's a 110. It's, this is probably about a $10,000 car. Basically, what this guy's done and what his company does, he's taken a Tesla components like the batteries, the uh, Tesla drive train system, the motor and, and uh, inverters, speed control, all this kind of stuff, and fitted it into this Land Rover. And this is a conversion. You can actually you could actually buy something like this. Firstly, some little facts about this car. So yeah, it's a Defender 110. It's about 15 years old. It's a, probably about a 10 grand car to buy it. This conversion is forty thousand dollars, something like that. That's four zero, but that's because the parts are expensive. I mean, if you look through the cost of the parts, it'll make sense and that's easy to check. What's clever here is they put this Tesla motor here. I'm not sure which Tesla it is out of, but this is probably a, I don't know, three, 400 horsepower motor. It's a lot of power. And this drive shaft here goes straight into the, um, straight into the transfer box. So if, for those who don't know, the transfer box on a, on a four by four takes a drive from the engine normally and puts it to the back and front wheels. And this one allows two, two different ratios. So you kept the ratio uh, selection high and low and all the the diff lock and diff locks on the back and front and all this kind of stuff is still working like the original so it's uh yeah a very a very cool thing there's some other interesting stuff here we'll go around to the front and have a look at where the battery is so there's some interesting stuff in the front here you've got this radiator this is because the battery and the motor are both liquid cooled so that's a feature of Tesla and this stuff is just transferred across because you want the battery to be liquid cooled. The brake servo over here just runs on an electrical uh, vacuum pump. This is a normal brake servo so it requires a low pressure. So just a, a vacuum pump for that. And the motor and the transfer box both I think require pressurised oil. Um, I'm guessing both for cooling and lubrication and the pressurised oil is driven by an electrical oil pump. This vehicle I think is about 2,300 kilos the weight. You can hear the pumps and things when it's turned on but when it's done it'll be virtually silent and we were talking about a completely silent mode as well which is kind of an interesting thing because something people don't think about is that these vehicles are extremely quiet so if you're using it where you don't want to make a noise for whatever reason um, that's something you you really can't do with a car that's got a any kind of vehicle with a gas engine on with an internal combustion engine you know a traditional engine and it's also worth mentioning this thing is completely waterproof as well so it will be able to go in and out of water no problem and obviously doesn't have the air induction issues that come with uh, normally aspirated piston engine type vehicles so if you have a Tesla or some kind of electric vehicle and uh, you have problems finding the chargers, one, one solution of course is just to tow your own charger. So what this guy's built here is a trailer that's basically a huge power supply. It's got solar panels on it. The, those panels uh, you'll see can pull out from the side to give you more area. You could in theory attach more panels to it. It's got two Tesla batteries in there and uh, all the inv inverter equipment. That can power probably five to ten typical houses, private homes, or a small factory. You can, because it's putting out three-phase electricity, you can also run industrial equipment off it. So like a big lathe or a milling machine or this kind of thing will run off that, no problem. Uh, the cool thing about it is, of course, if you want a power supply somewhere where you don't have power, you can just show up with that, jack it up, take the trailer out, leave with the trailer, leave the thing standing there, and you can run whatever you want to run off it silently and use it as a base for the vehicle. So you can, basically park your vehicle near it, plug the vehicle into it to charge it, drive around, use it, come back, plug it in and charge it again. So it's also a remote charger. So you're, you're trying to set up here off grid or even just buy a piece of land in the countryside. A smaller version of this is a very handy thing to have because you can be up and running with power and internet and everything immediately.